Hey everybody, we're Hard for Games. Welcome to the show. Today we're going to be looking at God Hand and Samurai Western, two high value, unusual Western themed PlayStation 2 games. Yeah, and oddly, they were part of a plethora of PlayStation 2 Western games. There was a bit of a mm. boom. At the time, there was Gun, there um, was uh, Red, Red Dead, Dead Revolver, Revolver uh, Dark Watch, Wild Arms, Call of Juarez. Yeah. Uh, it was suddenly everybody was like, "Ooh, hey, it's like 2005. We have to make a western." Yeah, I, maybe it was because they had more power to do vast open spaces and they had the dvd medium for the storage i don't know what it was but there were a bunch of these but these two ones in particular stand out we're going to review them today and then tell you why we think they're so collectible at the end so we're going to start with samurai, samurai western. western now if you thought the 32-bit era overdid it with cutscenes. This is a lengthy, lengthy intro cutscene, but it does set the mood and kind of tell you what your character's fighting style is all about. Yeah, and there's some weird, not quite properly motion tracking. <laughs> I mean, motion tracking was also way harder to do at that point, and they just didn't have the budget for this sort of thing. Like, <laughs> he's zooming, but the background isn't. And like you mentioned, as we saw, this is an Atlas title, and a lot of Atlas titles have gone up in price over the Ooh, years. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a lot of bullets, just like in the Matrix. And when I saw this for the first time, I was like, oh, this is so cool. But then when it finally showed his character model, it just felt so much less cool than the silhouette. Yeah, they probably should have just gone, I don't know, straight to the, the title instead of like they do sort of like a transformation into his character, which I think they do somewhere right around now. Yeah. Yeah, there like, it is. That threw like, me off. Oh. I'm like, oh, is this Soul Calibur? Like, what, oh. <laughs> like, what is this? He was so much cooler as a silhouette. I mean, once you see him in game, it's totally fine. You get used to it, whatever. But like, that was just, it, it threw me the hell off. Yeah, the way of the warrior is to seek death. Do they need to put subtitles in for something that's literally on the screen? <laughs> I know. Sometimes you play PlayStation 2 and you go, damn, that looks pretty good. And there are also some times where you go, Damn, that looks PlayStation 2. Yeah. PlayStation 2 is like right on that edge where it's like either kind of endearing in its chunkiness or also, hey, that's actually pretty good. Yeah. The dodging motion kind of becomes like a dance around these bullets, which is kind of what we saw a little bit in that opening cutscene, although we do eventually get the ability to deflect bullets. Yeah, I actually deflected one completely by accident like earlier. Oh, okay. Now, when I first played this, I was like, I get that, like, uh, I mean, I guess I get that some of these guys would be attacking him, but, like, literally the entire town. Every single person in this town is like, oh, this Japanese guy came to town. We should kill him. I've never personally gone to, say, Nevada dressed as a samurai. Maybe that's just, like, a thing they do out Maybe. in the desert. We're like, well, now, partner, you don't look like you're from around here. Time to die. <laughs> and they just like, they just have to kill you. I guess. The, I mean, the whole cowboys sense. and Indians thing, I mean, that's more sort of fictional for movies. Yep. Uh, the actual conflicts were more. Cowboys uh, and the Japanese. Uh, yeah. The, the real problem in the, the, the wild quest it was the wild pop-in. <laughs> I do kind of like how they have that blurry effect. Like the warp effect when you're being shot at. Yeah. So you can be like, oh, there's like a bullet coming through. You know, there's, there's it's, something It's also there. like an extra way to kind of telegraph it. Yeah. So you have the map with the enemies, and then you also have the warp effect, like, from the direction when you're being shot at. So there, there are multiple ways to kind of see what's going on. If you're fiddling with the camera or getting used to it, you know, you can kind of be like, okay, well, there's some danger over here that I need to deal, deal with, and over here, and over here. I mean, literally right now, it's everywhere. So, I mean, it, you could turn in any direction, but once you whittle these guys down a little bit. You see what I mean? They're all, like, lifting their knives up at the same time. They're, like, very copy-paste. So, yeah, just deflected a couple of bullets. Yeah. Apparently there's like a mechanic where if you hit it at the right time. I will say um, one thing against this game. This is a lot of tutorial all right at the start. Yeah. 
It also kind of reminds me of like Dynasty Warriors, just because there's so many enemies. <laughs> I mean, they're not as many as Dynasty Warriors. Lubu, do not pursue. But there's just like so much. What the hell? <laughs> what is that? Is that a Gatling gun on his back? Yes, and like a, an ogre skull or something on his shoulder. This is amazing. <laughs> well, I think I have my favorite character, and it's this dude who just showed up. That's partially part of the reason why this reminds me of the, um, the Dynasty a little weird. or like the Warriors series is because yeah, yeah, there's just like a brawler. Yeah, well, it's a brawler, but also like there's just so many enemies that like you kind of don't notice the fact that they're dumb because the quantity is so high that you can kind of get overwhelmed and you're distracted by going to the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one at like a very fast pace. But when you actually like break it down and you're or you're doing like a one on one, you know, the AI is like very simple here. Ooh, I leveled up. Ooh, I'm now a Ronin. New weapon. Nice. Bad guy hat. Right now. Eh. Well, defense let's, is let's good. Let's wait till I see the weapon. Weapon's good. But I get less life. Less MP, less power from it. Really? So what's the point? Well, I bet it plays in a different way. It might be that it has like a different move set or something like that. Let's give it a go. Kind of stinks that this is just the same uh, like place, you know? Like you're just kind of doing the same thing with tougher enemies in stage three so far. Yeah. So do you notice a difference in the weapon? Yeah. How so? Can you describe it? Uh, it, it has a different move set for one. My jump attack isn't quite the same, but it seems to be better at deflecting. Okay. So do you think they, like, dumb down some of the stats a little bit compared to your original blade? Because... Probably to deflection. balance it out a yeah. little bit. It might also be that, like, you know, it need, needs more to level up to what it is, but... Okay. It's really nice that, uh, you know, he can come to the U.S. and finds a new samurai sword. That's yeah. arguably better than his other samurai sword in this small western town. That's just the promise of America. That's what that is. Yeah, that is that is the American dream. That's right. The Americone dream. Finally. Good thing you're wearing two hats for this. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And there's a nice little call back to the opening cinema when yeah. you die. All right, let's see. Okay, those don't do nearly as much damage as I thought. The camera just does not want to listen to me. It's like overly obsessed with where I'm trying to go. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, you found it. You found the sweet spot. It's what I do in games. I find the sweet spot, Tony. <laughs> well, we knew. I this mean, is why you don't bring a gun to a knife fight. That's right. But uh, yeah, this is working out pretty good for you. And he's so obsessed. Like I said, it's it's simple AI. Yeah. Right. I mean, obviously it's the PlayStation 2, but just in general, this game is built around a magnitude of enemies with simple AI that just try to overwhelm you. Right. So instead of walking around, this guy is just stuck behind the stagecoach. Well, he's also got, like, such a, a normally effective tactic that he doesn't really have to change it very much. Yeah, but this is what debugging's for, son. Okay. Just, just, um, could, could you crop that skilled part and have it just below me attacking him through the wall? <laughs> yeah, that's... Skilled. Skilled. No more hats. Take their hats. Uh, apparently there's also a whole bunch of unlockable characters in this game. Oh, yeah? There's, like, 20 of them or something like that? Really? Yeah. This is Hope Town. It's our town. And it's always been filled with our laughter. So, God Hand is also kind of like a Western-themed brawler. For years now, I've been trying to get a copy, uh, just hoping one would come through the shop, and I kept thinking, like, man, I don't want to spend more than, like, 40 or 50 bucks. And the price just kept going up and up and up and up and up and up. And then finally... Um, a guy sold me a copy for 40 to 50, something like that. And then like two months later, it was $110. And I was like, <sighs> <laughs> I, I got it right before the point of no return. Yeah. 
Then I started getting paid way more, so then I bought Samurai Western. <laughs> <laughs> so I did get a sweet deal I, on one of these. I don't know why I thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cheap sure. about the one game, and the other one, I I like just threw the money it's at like, without even playing. Oh, I was like, yeah, it's like it's like you're you know you're you're working, and then you like you, you get a raise, and you're like, screw it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this game definitely has a, a a much more unique soundtrack. Yeah, which is why uh, I I would describe this game as like uh, anime six string samurai brawler. This game comparatively to the previous one it takes more from the brawler genre than it does the Western genre, but also just, it, it seems less, less like Dynasty Warriors, Dynasty Warriors than Musa, the other one yeah. is. Yeah, this one focuses more on like actual like you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat and combos, which the other one did, but just not as much. Yeah. Tumbleweed. Yep, there's a tumbleweed. That's at least one tumbleweed now. Now, one great thing about this, even from the start, is the, the character animations are just really good. And the models. Yeah. Like, that's actually, both of these are really good yeah. for the period. Wait. Definitely feels more like a Streets of Rage combined with a Street Fighter combined with... A western yeah also look at the uh fantastic like animations that are going on in this the controls are definitely a little bit weirder to get used to i love how like casual the music is oh yeah it's kind of funny there we are. <laughs> so okay so you can go in, and there's this thing called the roulette, and that's okay. your techniques. Yeah. So I can say, like, mmm, La Bamba, I want to move that one around. Yeah, Shockwave. What do I want to change that with? Well, there's nothing I can do there. But, check this out. For techniques, I can be like, okay, each of these, or maybe I, I want left jab, straight, left hook, uppercut. Hmm. I think I want it to end with a pimp hand. <laughs> so there's an absurd amount of customization. In yeah. This, to the point where it's like, I can't even comprehend it. So you see here, like the animations are really, really good. And it's just added and compounded by the fact that you have so much customization. The only thing I, I really don't like about this game is I, I think the camera could benefit from being a little bit further behind you. Oh there, yeah. I don't know if there's a way to do that. Um, but also it just, it's a little bit claustrophobic. claustrophobic and twitchy, which I get, they probably wanted it in close so you could see all of the really nice animation and details on the character models. But it, it just, it feels like, I don't know, like it, it, I, it's hard, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> somehow that worked. Uh, but it, I guess I clipped him there. I, I was gonna say it's hard when the enemies are behind you and you, you feel like you can't do anything about it, but then you just sent him flying. <laughs> But yeah, see how like you can level up in this game, but you can also level down. So it's like you do really good, you level up, oh. you do poorly, you level down. It's like a temporary level up, kind of. But you can like you can keep them, but you have to just keep doing well. Just stop for a second. Let me see. Let me see the idle animations. Oh yeah, where he does kind of that. Yeah, like he's like loosening yeah. it up. He's he's dancing around. He's doing That's... kind of that that boxer's dance, like bobbing, weaving, slipping. And the, the, the clothing actually tracks pretty well. Yeah. I mean, it clips here and there, but it, all in all, it looks really good yeah. for the era. I mean, this is PlayStation 2, and it feels like, I mean, there are PlayStation 3 oh, games yeah. that don't have animation this good, you know? Which, uh, the team behind this, <laughs> made a PlayStation 3 game called Azura's Wrath. And I've heard of that. Yeah. I have it. Oh, is it any good? Uh, I've not played it yet. Okay. Uh, it's insanely cheap. So if you wanted to play God Hand and you missed out on it before it got stupidly expensive, check that one out. That's what I've been told by everybody who has played it. I haven't played it yet though, but I've heard it is the spiritual sequel. Okay, I might check that out. So you have that boss. Uh, ba, 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 ba. We'll do the wild pitch. Nice. <laughs> what? Got it, you. I like how cocky he is, and he kind of celebrates afterwards a little bit. Oh, jeez, wow, nice counter. Uh oh. 
Does it ever say why some of them just turn into demons? Hey, you know how it is sometimes. <laughs> I, I do know how it is sometimes. Sometimes it just be like that, you know? Yeah, so they, like dodges are handled this way. Aw. So you like duck, back up, side, side. Bet there's like some random hidden shit back here. Hello. You up for my challenge? Of course. Sure. As long as you refill my health before we get started. <laughs> I'm get my ass stomped. Also, when like a tiny demon asks if you're up for their challenge, I personally suggest to you guys that maybe do less drugs. Yeah, also it didn't refill your health before this, so. Oh boy. Good luck. The thing is it wants you so hyper-focused and locked on to one enemy at a time because it, it kind of has that fighting game men, men, like mechanic, you know what I mean? Mentality. Mentality, yeah. So it's like it has this mentality that you're like one at a time. And so it wants to hyper-focus you on that one so you can do your combos on that one. But the problem is that you get, you know, uh, attacked by multiple people from multiple sides, so it can just be a little bit over oh, right. Sure, let's give it a try this time. We might actually win this time around. Destroy the car before time runs out. Okay, yeah, that I can do. Hit with that God Hand, son. Okay, so we have God Hand and... Samurai Western. And they're both very solid games in their own right. And we want to talk a little bit about why they've earned their cult status. Uh, but before we do, just in a very simple terms, why are they so expensive? Uh, high demand, low supply. Yeah, and why are they Although so... Although that doesn't always completely no. account for a game. Sometimes it has a weird story. Maybe that is the case with this one. Oh, yeah. I know with a lot of the high-value PS2 ones, like, a lot of those, like, insanely expensive horror games, it's like, oh, it got pulled from shelves, oh, it had an extreme low print run, the yeah. company went under as soon as they printed it, so they only made one printing. But I think these are just sort of, you know, cult classics that are rare on PlayStation 2 are finally going up. Yeah. GameCube I knew was going to shoot up someday, and I was just waiting for one day PlayStation 2 to do it. Yeah. Because, like, an expensive PlayStation 2 game was, like, a joke for a long time. I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, but eventually it always does. Do these really deserve to be this much? I would say if this was, like... $60, $70 game, I'd say, yeah, it, it's sweet buy at that price, but um, like, it's like 150 now, so. In my opinion, I don't know, I don't think either of them are necessarily worth, you know, over, 100, over $100, and... but I do think that they do deserve a higher price point and their cult status. They're very yeah. unique games. And you're saying earlier, this is kind of a nice guilty pleasure. This is a game that takes the brawler mentality and adds like, almost like a one-on-one -on -one fighter aspect to it. But because of that, like the camera is a little bit hard to control because they were yeah. so focused on that one-on-one -on -one fighter uh, sort of genre infusion into it. You but you can still get used to, to it. Forget what you know and just learn to play the game that game its own way. Yeah. But there's a lot of things going for both of these titles that make them extremely unique. And I think a lot of people just realize that in retrospect, plus yeah. with the rise of YouTube videos and, and such, People are like, oh, these have a lot going on here. That game gives you a lot of control in that you can change every button, how everything works, all the techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, I want a left hook, a right hook, a kick, and then an uppercut to try and like catch them together in that combo. I think that'll kind of sweep them and knock them out. That'll be perfect. I want this, I want this. I want to yeah. redo the whole way the roulette is because I like these three attacks the most and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And then uh, Samurai Western, you can have two hats. Yeah. So that kind of sums it up. Thank you for watching, <laughs> subscribing, joining us on Patreon. We'll see you all next time. Yeah, bye. bye.